Okay, here's another example of dividing polynomials. This one has a little bit of a twist. If we look at the dividend, we have 2x to the third minus 9x plus 20. So we have an x to the third term, and also there is no x squared term. It's important for us to see that there is a missing term here. It's going to affect how we set this problem up in the long division we're going to need to write our dividend always written in descending order but also if you look at the highest exponent we have in this case it's a three we need to have a space for exponent of three and two and an exponent technically exponent of one but that's just the regular x and then a, a column for the constants the numbers so when we don't get a, an x squared there we want to leave a space for it. So you're just going to look for the highest exponent you see that we're writing in descending order. And if we're missing a term, you should leave a space for it. We're still going to write these vertical lines. I want to do one more thing about this space. We're going to put in, since there's no x squared, we're going to put in 0x squared. OK, so that was basically the twist for this problem. There's nothing else we have to worry about. We're going to use our steps that we used in the previous example. This problem is going to be just smooth. The only difference here is that where we have a missing term, we're going to put in a 0x squared. That's going to keep our organization solid, and it's going to keep our flow through this problem pretty smooth. OK, so where do we start? We start with these terms that are on the left. With the divisor x plus 3, we're looking at this x. And with the dividend, we're looking at this 2x to the third. So couple choices are we saying x times what equals 2x to the third or we set it up with a division either way we should come up with that result are you seeing it 2x squared we need a coefficient of 2 we need two more x's and if you look at it this way you're gonna see the canceling and because we put in this placeholder of 0x squared we've got a space to put that 2x squared so we gave ourselves room to put in that x squared term we didn't start with an x squared term but it was going to show up working through this problem and we just wanted to have a space for it okay as soon as a term goes up on top next move is of course multiply back down we're going to do it twice 2x squared times the x and 2x squared times the positive 3 that's going to give us this 2x to the third and a positive 6x squared next move is subtract and of course I advocate that we're gonna flip signs and add just to keep that's I know that's what keeps me on track what I want for you to do is do with what is most comfortable for you and keeps your work accurate and this is just what I would always advocate that's just me though okay these terms cancel here I have a zero with a negative six and I'm thinking add a, a, a zero plus negative six that's negative six so we've got a negative six x squared and bringing down the next term is this negative nine x we're ready to start round two so we're thinking about this x and this negative six x squared uh, is it x times what equals negative six x squared or with division is it negative six x squared over x one of these ways hopefully you're settling on is, is the way you like the way that's going to get you to see it's a negative 6x that's the next term of our answer so we're throwing that up on top and as soon as we put that term on top we're multiplying back down negative 6x times the x and negative 6x times a positive 3 that's giving us this negative 6x squared and negative 18x course flip signs and add so we're gonna see the negative 6x squared with positive 6x squared cancel negative 9 plus a positive 18 that will leave us with a positive 9x and we've got another term here to bring down the positive 20 the last term so we're starting round 3 and we're thinking about this x and this 9x so we're going to skip over the, the work we usually put here and just say one of those two ways, maybe it's sinking in mentally where we can see that what do I need to do to get from this 9, or I'm sorry, this x to that 9x, it's, it's the 9 that's missing. So we put that third term up on top, positive 9. Still, as soon as you put an answer up on top, we're multiplying back down. So the positive 9 times x is 9x positive 9 times 3 is this 
positive 27. I, even now, I still like to flip signs and add. So this 9x with the negative 9x smash, they're gone. Positive 20 with this negative 27 will leave us with a negative 7. Nothing left to bring down, so this negative 7 is the remainder. And we're writing remainders the same way we did with the previous example. We're creating a, another fraction that we're going to add on to the tail end of this answer. So are you seeing our answer should be written like 2x squared minus 6x plus 9, getting all that from up on top, and then because we have a remainder, we have this last fraction to add on to the end. It's negative 7 over the divisor x plus Let's end with a problem for you to try. This is x cubed plus 3x squared minus 5 divided by x minus 1. So put the video on pause, take a few minutes to work through this problem, and then come back and we'll look at the solution together. Okay, so hopefully you've taken a few minutes to work that problem. And first of all, in my setup, I've put a placeholder here for the x term. This dividend had x cubed and it had x squared. What was missing though was the regular x term. It went right from 3x squared to negative 5. So I have a 0x as my placeholder for terms that are going to have just that regular x. And this is my work through this problem. So take a couple minutes here and this is my final answer x squared plus 4x plus 4 and with the remainder I have plus negative 1 over x minus 1. Hopefully these examples have been helpful for you and you've seen a lot of the twists and turns that you'll encounter with dividing polynomials. Hopefully you have a good organization and you'll take your time and do these problems accurately.